Senator, uh, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you. Once again, you and I spent a considerable amount of time together over the last um, 10 days or so. Um, so I'm happy to be talking to you uh, once again. Um, let me just first start with how you're doing. This, this is your area. Um, we are, what now, about 10 days or so mm -hmm. um, since this shooting, um, about 73 days at this point till the opening of the next school year. Um, how are you doing? Well, thank you, Yasmin. I think that there, um, I, I, the only thing I could describe it as is maybe survivor's guilt. I think that, you know, even if you didn't live in the area, you, 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 you just, your mind just plays games with you as to, you know, what if and, and so on. Um, I feel like we all failed these children. Yeah. I mean, we all failed these children. I, maybe we didn't yell enough in the legislature after the first six massacres that happened. Um, it's just been hard. I'll tell you, I, I wake up in the morning crying. I go to bed and I, and I find myself crying. It's just, uh, it's really difficult. And it's really difficult. And the more parents I meet, it gets even harder. Uh, yesterday, I talked to a little third grader who was there. Mm. Uh, and he could hardly speak to me. He was so uh, traumatized. It's gonna, these children that are the surviving children are going to be traumatized forever. I mean, it's just not... Not a good scene. Yeah, we're actually going to be speaking to um, Fred Guttenberg a little bit later on in the show um, about just that, that it's not just the people whose lives were taken, but the people who survived the shooting, um, the parents, the other siblings, the people in the community, and, and how that affects you going forward. Um, Senator, let's talk a little bit about the investigation, because you've been integral to figuring out the truth in all of this, and we're very appreciative of that. And I know yesterday um, you talked about those 911 calls, which there have been a lot of questions surrounding those 911 calls. Did Chief Arredondo know those 911 calls were coming in from room 111 and 112? And we're learning now that he, in fact, did not uh, know. Can you talk to me more about what we learned about that? Yeah. So as of yesterday, uh, the district attorney basically put a stop to any further reporting unless it goes out of her office. And so my communications with Colonel McCraw, at least on these issues with regard to this investigation, have stopped. Uh, he's been ordered uh, by the district attorney. Huh. I specifically was asking for a couple things. I was asking which officers were on the scene and where they were situated. I want to know who the 19 officers were. At any point in time, we know that at first we thought it was just two DPS officers. It was as many as 13 officers during the course of that 48 minutes. And, and that even still remains in dispute. It could have been beyond the 48 minutes. And so there was a lot of people moving around in that hallway for that period of time. Um, um, as to the 911 calls, it's pretty sad that I've had to do kind of my own investigating. I, I called CSEC, which is the Commission on State Emergency Communications, mm -hmm. and I asked them three times, would Arredondo get these calls? They said no. They go to a dispatcher that is UVAL DPD, and UVAL DPD dispatches to 17 first responders. And that list was is not available to them, but it is available to UVAL DPD. I am told that Uvalde PD would have sent to the school district, but I was also told by McCraw that for whatever reason, Arredondo was not getting the 911 calls. As I said before, all further communications on this issue have to be addressed to the DA. So do we know if any of those first responders were on the scene, A, that's my first question, and B, that still doesn't explain the fact that whether there was 13 officers in the hallways or 19 officers in the hallways, there were shots going off until 1221, and the first 911 call came off, went when in or came in at 12.03. So there's about 18 minutes or so in which there were still shots going off. And even if they didn't know those 911 calls were coming in, those officers were still aware there was an immediate threat and they didn't act. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was beyond just the ISD cop. I think that people were getting those 911 dispatches. But again, I don't get that clarity anymore because this investigation has now been taken over by the district attorney, who uh, I guess is going to present something to a grand jury. I don't know. Uh, that's what was communicated to me. My concern there is that these procedural things yeah. Uh, need to be need to be fleshed out immediately. We need to have transparency. The parents are asking me for transparency. They want to know what what happened. So I hope that her that her investigation is expeditious because listen, this community needs to know. We don't need to know after an election in November. This is an indictment on this entire system. This is an indictment on human failure and systemic failure. 911 calls, different radios that are being used by different uh, different companies that are that, that have radios by different law enforcement. It's a problem in rural Texas. Not everybody uses the same 
uh, radio transmission company. I mean, this is we need to we need to learn what happened so that we figure out how to fix it. And if we can't, and if that's being hidden through a so-called investigation by the district attorney's office, the policymakers will never be able to address it. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we haven't had a formal press conference, last one led by Steve McGraw, DPS, since Saturday, since I was there. No, that's right. I mean, it, you know, the, the governor has called these so-called special committees, which is not a special session. And part of it is to look at, you know, school safety. Well, how the hell are we supposed to know anything about school safety if we don't know what went wrong what because no one is telling us and the investigators have decided to just you know shut their mouths and not and tell us that you know we're not going to hear about this for a while now and that's just simply not right it's a lack of transparency it's a lack of leadership at the top in the governor's office right now the governor should demand the district attorney uh, complete this investigation as quickly as possible it's all on camera by the way these are cameras within the school at least that aspect of it, and show it to the public. Uh, and it begins at the top level. It begins it at the top level. Does. Yeah, in so many instances. State Senator Roland Gutierrez, as always, uh, we thank you. Please be well, sir. Take care of yourself.